we're back. Uh, we are going to do some air conditioning today on a Gen 4 LS swap. Uh, we've done them on uh, Gen 3 stuff, showed you how we did that. Gen 4, much more difficult. Uh, we're going to go through that whole thing today. Uh, I'm going to complain and whine about things non-stop because it's a Gen 4 <laughs> uh, and it, they're just difficult, okay? But uh, we'll have fun and uh, get this baby blowing nice cold air, all right? Yes. So let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, this is a 1984 Chevy C10. It has got a... Uh, 5.3 460E from a 2009 Chevy Tahoe, okay? It has a E38 computer uh, and it has its own separate uh, transmission computer, okay? Uh, it also has a cam in it. It's got a BTR cam in it. Uh, you'll hear it when we fire it up. It's amazing. Uh, we were curious of what uh, the air conditioning would do by forcing the AC compressor on. So I have done a little bit of the work to it so I could do that. Uh, it does not like it, just like um, the same as most of them. It wants to be run by the LS system to ramp up that idle and kind of prepare it for that, that draw when that compressor comes on. Yeah. It, it pretty much almost dies when, it, when the compressor kicks on. So. Wasn't a big surprise, especially with the cam in it, but we're gonna wire it up using the LS uh, computer body control module and the uh, HVAC module, okay? Uh, if you had a swap and you were doing a 2001, 2002, you could turn the AC on with just supplying power to that ECM. Okay. okay, now 2003 on up to Gen 4, then you have to incorporate the HVAC module. Yes. And we've done uh, videos on how I do that, but Gen 4 comes around, so you've got to incorporate the HVAC module and also the body control module, okay? Which is the only way to get that baby to turn on LS style. Yes. Okay? I also did the lines on this thing. Uh, we put one of our compressor mounts in it and it had a giant seven inch notch in the frame that uh, I also fixed. So uh, everything uh, should work nicely once we get it all wired up. I'm using a ton of the wiring that I'm doing from this Gen 4 stuff on uh, Dad's truck, a truck that's here from Mississippi. And speaking of that, we are going to be in Mississippi in October, right? Yeah. For cruising the coast. We are, I right? I didn't know we were announcing it. Oh yeah. So I hope people come <laughs> down there and see us. Emily will give you all the details, uh, but uh, we'll be there for cruising the coast and we're excited about that. And it's our first vacation ever together. Ever. <laughs> yes. So, and we've been together for well, how many years? I don't know. Ten? At least. Man. Okay. All right. So let's get to wiring this thing, all right? Okay. Okay. Pointer. Pointer. <laughs> okay. Also, this truck has got a PSI harness in it, and everybody's constantly saying, why don't you mess around with some standalone harnesses? That's what this has in it. We did not do this LS swap. The guy who uh, owns this truck, he did the LS swap. He brought it to us and I did the terminating, the final terminating of the PSI harness and I fired this truck up for the first time for him. Okay. Yep. I have nice things to say about the standalone harnesses and I have uh, bad things to say about them also. So you'll get to hear it both. They all, everything's got its ups and downs, you know? Yeah. Okay, so we didn't swap it because you know if we had swapped it, it wouldn't have a cam in it. <laughs> Uh, let's get to doing what we've done kind of so far on the thing. The ECM, uh, it's the E38, a uh, tiny little computer, about a third of the size of the Gen 3 ones. They just have two, the two connectors going to them. 
and they don't have a whole lot of um, pins, you know? Yeah. There's not, there's not much to them, so. But everything that we deal with to get the air conditioning running on this truck is in the connector number one. Uh, it's real easy to identify, but it is very uh, difficult to take apart and deep <laughs> in because uh, all the pieces are, it's, it's a lot smaller. Yes. Okay. Microscopic. Yep. Uh, the PSI harness, it already had the 17 and 58 uh, fan control wires uh, because we already wired this truck up uh, with the fans and ser and uh, series parallel circuit, so it'll run half speed on one and full speed on uh, two. So that comes in the harness, okay? okay? Now these do not the these three and this one here for air conditioning. The these three wires here. They go to the high pressure sensor, the potentiometer that's in the uh, discharge line, the high side line uh, that leads from the compressor to the uh, condenser, the top of the condenser. So we had to add these wires, which I've actually already done and I'll just show you those. And I had to add this wire, which is the wire that goes and it. It actually ends up being the ECM grounds this relay uh, I use pin 86. Uh, we're going to get power going to that relay off of uh, our battery. Uh, protect it with a 10 amp fuse. We'll have 30, or we'll have 12 volts at 30, and we'll have 12 volts at uh, pin 85. Okay. So when the ECM finally decides that it's it's okay to turn the air conditioning on, and it grounds it out, it's going to make a connection between 30 and 87 supply power to the compressor clutch and then you're, it's there's your ground source also to complete the circuit okay but there's a ton of magic that has to happen in order for that thing to ground it out and that's what we're going to accomplish so let's do let's show these um i look i look through a lot of e38 computers and um, these could vary quite a bit from what you have for an engine Mm -hmm. um, so, of course, like I always say, go, go through your own wiring diagram for what you're looking at and make sure all of uh, all my pins, don't, don't trust my pins. These are the pins for 2009 Tahoe, okay? All right, let's go to the truck. Okay, so down in the high side of the AC lines, you've got your uh, high pressure sensor, okay? And this one's just a loose one that I've got sitting around. I've got one in the line down there already. And so I went and I stole my connector out of a, one of our donors. You can buy them brand new. The brand new ones come with all three of the wires of the same color. So you gotta, you gotta know what pin you need for, for it. And we've got, we've got that up there for the 2009. But I had to add uh, these three wires that lead into the ECM. Okay, and this guy mounted the ECM on, on the inside of the truck. We'll go look at that. Okay, uh, I put him in a harness already, kind of, and I ran him through the back, and that's, that's these three wires right here that are going into the ECM. Okay? Okay. Okay, so. I'm going to utilize this little igloo cooler. I love that cooler. I know. We'll probably give this cooler away to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mark. You think you'd be upset? I would be. Okay. All right. So you can see that I've been messing around with this connector here. And then I haven't done anything at all to this connector. It's, it's still the same as it was from PSI. Um, but you can see that I've added three wires to it and then you can see how small the little pins are okay and in order to get the pin out of them for me the easy, there's a special tool you can buy to to do it but i take i take this off of it should i show them how to do it yeah that'd probably be handy okay. for somebody. all right hang on a okay so i take the back of back of the plug off so i can see my wires and you can see the wires that I added to it 
this guy, he um, had a donor harness. So he brought us another harness and I took these wires out of a, a donor. But so I had to add those. And the way I do it, I come in and I pull the front of the plug off which is not easy to do either. Yeah, those are tiny little tabs, so you don't wanna just... Yeah, so it, ju it just has these little tabs on the side here holding, them, holding it on, okay? And the E, or the X1 connector is easy to uh, see because it's got this, this one large square on it. The other one doesn't have that. It's for a big ground, okay? So down in there, next to the I'll pull out one of them that I did okay so way down there you've got a a little uh, plastic tab and it seems like it works better just to pull on the wire a little bit from behind and then move the tab and move something smaller There it goes. Okay. So, so I'm not going to say it's the easiest thing in the world to do. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's possible to do. Putting them in is no problem. Push them in until you feel the little click. But for every wire that I added, that's what I did. And on this, on this whole job, I had to add these two. Uh, I had to add uh, this one. And... I had to add this one, okay? Yeah. We'll talk about that one. We already did a little bit, but that's the one that supplies ground to our compressor relay, okay? So I had to go in and add those four wires. And the other problem is counting over on them, uh, them being so small. Uh, the first time I did it, I plugged my scan tool in and it did not have pressure. So I looked and I, it didn't have five volt reference. And I, I was like, well, why doesn't it have five volt reference? Cause I couldn't, there's no way I made a mistake. <laughs> and sure enough, I had it one pin off because I, I just um, counted over wrong. Okay. So I fixed that and then I, I double checked the rest of them, make sure I got them in the right ones. And there are, so there you go. Okay. Okay. So those four wires added to that connector, and that's all we are going to do with this E38 computer for air conditioning. Yes. Okay. Yep. Back to the board. Back to the whiteboard. Uh, okay. So at this point, this is what we have done. We have th these three wires done, okay? And we also have this wire done. It's just coming out of the firewall and we gotta hook it up to our relay. We will do that next, okay? okay. But I'm gonna take a second to talk about this portion of it. The high pressure sensor on all of these, Gen 3, Gen 4, uh, up until you get into like 2013, 14s, up in there, they, the fans change a little bit. So you gotta be real careful what your swap or what your donor is basically. Oh. Okay, so I looked at that, but these were all pretty much the same. And what happens is the high pressure sensor sends a signal to that ECM and that ECM says, hey, your condenser is up to uh, say it's up to 200 degrees, okay? Uh, which is also 200 pounds. Does it make sense? No. Refrigerant, <laughs> refrigerant and temperature, that's how refrigerant works. If it's 200 degrees, it's got 200 pounds of pressure in there too, hmm. okay? okay. Same, same thing with the low side. If it's 35 pounds pressure, it's uh -huh. 35 degrees. Hmm. It's uh, mm -hmm. magic. Okay. Magic. <laughs> uh, but that's how refrigerant works, but not how it works, but in a layman 
My kind of term. That's how it works. It's the dumb version. Yeah. <laughs> Refrigerant for dummies. Right. <laughs> okay, so I go ahead and I did this up, and what I wanted to do was check on my ECM because I could plug my scan tool into it and see that my pressure sensor is working because it's going to show a reading even with the air conditioning off. It's going to show whatever whatever your uh, temperature is because like the whole say the day we did it it was 80 degrees without the truck running without the compressor running it's going to show around 80 pounds so we go ahead and we wired that up and took a look at it and it it read zero nothing so i figured at that point i go well something's wrong i did something wrong or got wires in the wrong spot or something so i go and i check my pin uh, two, which comes out of 34, and it has five volts reference, okay? Okay. So then I, then I double checked 13 and 12. I did it with an ohmmeter. I pulled, I pulled them back out of the ECM, and sure enough, I had continuity, you know, no resistance whatsoever between 12 and 13 and one and three, okay? Okay. So I knew my wiring was okay to that ECM. So then I'm like, then I'm going, well, if I got it wired right, why is it not uh, reading pressure? Okay. Right. And the reason I wanted it to, to do that would be to run the fans. Okay. Mm -hmm. Measures that pressure, then it runs the fans. And there are people with Gen 3 stuff that trick the, trick the compressor to come on but they still rely on that to run the cooling fans but in this instance without that reading pressure it would not have turned the fans on yeah okay uh the only thing that this thing was set up for to turn the fans on was just for engine cooling temperature okay okay so then i think well let me go and grab a ecm an e38 out of a 2000 yukon out back yeah, 2007 Yukon out back. We just by chance happened to have one. I go and I plug that ECM into this this truck, and I've got pressure. Yeah, it shows pressure. And so then I got on the phone and called everybody that I <laughs> thought was thought could figure it out or give me an answer or whatever. And both the people that I talked to said I don't know. Yeah. Okay, so I, I got to looking around at all the misinformation on the internet and I decided, well, uh, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and wire everything up and then see what happens afterwards. And if it turns out that it's a bad ECM that I can't get that to read for some reason, then I'll take and I'll have the, the, the tune uh, duplicated and then put in my 2007 Yukon E38 that would have been my fix for it if I had to do that. So I, I just forgot about that for, for a little bit and I went ahead and I, and I wired up the rest of the stuff that I needed to double check my body control module and my AC module, okay? So I did all that and I just kind of makeshift uh, plugged it in and I sent a signal to the ECM, an AC request and that started working. Huh. Huh. Would you look at that? Yeah. <laughs> and I have no clue why it would do that, but without that ECM being told that the air conditioning was required, uh, it did not sense that, and it would not have turned those fans on for air conditioning. Yeah. Okay? You, you didn't uh, fill out the proper paperwork. Yes. To make the proper request. Exactly. So, I got on the phone, apologized for bothering those people. <laughs> I told them what I found out, and uh, they were still just like me. They're both of them said, uh, I don't know. I you don't know. know. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know why. But whatever. So I found that out. So if you're going to do one yourself, that's just my little hint. Wire it up correctly, and if you don't see that pressure, don't worry about it for a while, okay? Wait until you get the rest of it all done to where you can command that on and then 
if it doesn't work, worry about it then. But I think it will work, okay? And there was there were people that I saw that I know it wasn't accurate, but they were listing off certain ECMs that do this and don't do this. Mm-hmm. And I don't believe that at all. I think it was just I think they probably all do that, that for some reason. And because uh, I can't see them making different E38s that react in a different way for for that stuff. But no, it, it may be that yeah. it's looking at different pins, but. Yeah, well, yeah, but that's the the thing. Like when I go and I look at all the wiring diagrams. Yeah. And even this ECM that's running this truck, and someday we will sit down and we will talk about the whole nightmare that this truck has been. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, and I mean, it has been a colossal nightmare. Yes, we have it, uh, we have permission from the owner to burn it down if we need to. Yeah. So. <laughs> it has a. We probably shouldn't say it though, because the insurance. Oh no, he, we don't. He was going to bump his insurance up. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh oh. So this is a 2009. It come out of a 2009 Tahoe with a 4L60E transmission, and in 2009 4L60Es they switched into internal uh, permeable switches in them, and they got rid of one of the uh, pressure solenoids, and they added a temperature sensor in them. So we took a look at this ECM and this ECM was actually a, out of a 2007 Silverado, okay? Mm-hmm. And well, the long story short, the transmission wouldn't shift. Yeah. Okay? So that was a whole other problem. We'll, we'll get into that again someday, okay? But this ECM is actually out of a 2007, but it's been programmed now for what we needed to do and it's Pretty much 2009 Tahoe, okay? But all the pins the same, all the all those functions are the same, so no no problem there, okay? So where are we at now? We're, let's do this wire, and it is the wire that will come off of the relay, and it goes to pin 63, which we just showed you in connector um, X1. Uh, they call it X1. On, the, on this connector, but if I look at a 2007, they're C1s. <clears throat> but it's the same so, connector. But exactly the same connector, but back then they called them C1, and then it, a couple of years later, well, let's, let's call it something else. Yeah. Okay? So, let's mm-hmm. do some wiring, okay? Okay. All right. I'm going to use the puppy dog. Mm. Fender. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Keep with the theme. <laughs> Did you want to show people your new uh, heat gun? Tell people what happened? Well, yeah. Our old heat gun finally gave up. Or, no, I'm sorry. Emily's uh, <laughs> hair dryer uh, finally gave out. Okay. Uh, I've been having to take her for rides in the truck and she holds her head out the door uh-huh. and uh, to get her hair dry or whatever you want to call that. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and frankly, it's getting kind of embarrassing, and it wouldn't be that embarrassing if you didn't drool. Well, okay? I mean, I just get excited. And I mean, look at all this volume, you yeah. know? Yeah. Huh. <laughs> something. Yeah, it's something. Okay. So anyway, we went and got her a new dryer, and uh, we'll see how it goes, okay? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how much I like it, but we'll see. It's like $22, <laughs> yeah. so... Yeah, it looks nice. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about my relay for a second. First, I didn't like the grounds. He didn't really have a good place for me to ground it on the firewall. So I got rid of the paint underneath that, went behind there, ran a bolt through it with a um, piercing washer on it. And that's also going to be my ground. But I'm, for now, I'm just going to hang my relay on it. It's a four pin relay. The uh, wire that is going to trigger the relay is that green one that we were just talking about that comes off of pin 63 on the ECM connector one. So it'll go to pin 86 on the relay. And then we'll talk about the power wires here in just a second. But when that relay is, is in the closed position, when the AC is on, it's going to supply power to the compressor clutch through pin 87, which is this blue wire. And then 
I ran the plug down to the con or down to the compressor already. Okay. I made it a green wire, and I also uh, did the black ground that comes off of the plug. I ran it next to my sensor wires, and they're just popping out the back here. Uh, I'm not gonna um, do anything real fancy right now. We're just gonna get it going. And then uh, I'll, I'll clean it up later. But uh, so we just need to connect these two together and we can call everything in our picture pretty much done. Sweet. I'm gonna end up redoing these. So I'm not gonna heat shrink everything because we got a, a lot of wiring to do to get this done. And we'll, I'll just save some time and heat shrink it all when I make it look nice. Definitely quieter. <laughs> Sweet. Okay. So that was uh, that was this wire. We got it blue here, but it's really a dark green wire. Um, and then the ground uh, for it is that black one that I showed you a second ago. Yeah. And I have it grounded on the back of the right hand uh, cylinder head. According to the wiring diagram, it's supposed to be on the left hand side, but there was a bunch of grounds on the left hand side, so I just put it on the right. And uh, somebody would easily find that if they needed to. So that portion of it is done. And then I've already done the power to it. But what, it, what it's got is it's got a 10 amp uh, protected circuit that's going to go to pin 30 and pin 85 and that's all that clutch needs to to run that thing older clutches took a lot more uh, power than that but this thing being protected by a 10 amp circuit uh be perfect and uh i actually have this one coming from uh, the interior fuse panel because the um well we could show them. A PSI harness, that's all there are for fuses. Just enough to run uh, the engine and transmission. And uh, so I don't have any place on the PSI harness where I can add anything on. And that's another reason why I love the donor wiring harness and fuse box. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of options. Yes. So here's my wire. Uh, that I made coming over it goes and it just tees off and it goes it goes to pin uh, 85 on the relay and it also goes to pin 30 on the relay okay? okay so so when that relay closes when that ECM tells it to uh, close the relay power is going to go to 87 through the clutch and to ground on the back of the head so that portion of it is done and that is all that is done that goes to the ECM, okay? And people are probably saying, well, how is that turning your air conditioning on? Because there's no wires going to it saying, hey, where's that wire? Data. 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 Uh, we'll show it in the picture here in a second, but the ECM has uh, two wires that come out of it. They are GM LAN uh, plus and minus, and they talk computer language to the body control module. And then the body control module talks um, computer language through a low speed uh, GM uh, serial data wire uh, to the uh, HVAC control module. Okay? okay. So one wire from mm -hmm. the HVAC module to the, um, well, more than one wires, but to communicate it, the ECM does all the stuff that it's supposed to do just by two wires that communicate to it. Yeah. Okay? Data. Data. That's right. So let's change our picture, okay? So get a good picture of that. Okay. Now let's get into the HVAC module and the BCM.
Uh, let's start with the HVAC module because uh, it's the same as anything else, right? Yeah, sure. Doesn't matter. I've already done a couple things on the HVAC module. Uh, I go through the wiring diagram, the complete wiring diagram for the HVAC module, and I figure out uh, which wires that it is going to need to turn the air conditioning on. And because there are a ton of wires uh, in this module that uh, just we don't need. And just by chance, all the wires that we do need are in connector number two. So the other three, I will, I will use these in uh, the Mississippi truck. So I still have these plugs, but, um, but I don't need them just to turn the air conditioning on on this truck. Okay. Okay. So I have two of them done already. And the two that I have done are the ambient air temperature sensor uh, switch wires. I got 16 and uh, pin number four in that plug. The air conditioning uh, computer, it wants to know that it is above 34 degrees outside. There's, oh. there's no reason to run your air conditioning when it's uh, 30, 30 degrees or whatever. Yeah. If you are running it, it reminds me of a few people that I've ridden with that <laughs> I can't stand riding with them because it's too cold. Yeah, really? Yeah, but you don't need your air conditioning below 30 um four degrees, so that's what this thing does. Uh, it's mounted on the uh, front of the radiator, down in the, down in like this portion of the donor, right below the um, transmission cooler on that bracket. Oh yeah. Um, that's where most of them are sitting, and uh, that's what that little thing is. It's not a crash sensor wire. People, people see them and they go, oh, that's got to be a, a crash sensor. It's like, no, it's a temperature sensor. Ambient temperature. So I've already done it. The number four was light green and the number 16 was dark green. And this plug, you read it from the back, uh, like number one here is red and white with a white stripe, hot at all times. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the number five, would be one, two, three, four, five. Uh, this green wire, this is our GM uh, serial data wire. General Mills? That, I'm hungry. It you does said, sound delicious. You said cereal. I'm thinking Lucky Charms for dinner. Who made Frosted Flakes? Oh, Kellogg's. Yeah. That's right. This is the Kellogg's family. I'm a, I'm a Frosted Flakes kind of guy. You look like a Frosted Flakes guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's let's just hook some of these up, all right? And I'm gonna have to add some wires, basically. It just gets one power wire going to it that is hot at all times, hot, like we like to call it. Also, my high school nickname. <laughs> hot at all times, not not hot. Nobody called me hot. These wires are going to be temporary, so. But I need them to be longer, so I'm just going to add some length to this so we don't have to fight through this. It's protected by a 10 amp fuse. Uh, we're not going to do that in this video. I'll do that when I finish everything. I'm using the butt connector. Yeah, it's a butt. <laughs> Pepper, don't help, please. I don't think this thing puts out as much air as the other one. No, the temperature was supposed to be the same, but the glow is definitely not. Mm. It was, the whole thing was the same price as the part to fix the other one, so... Maybe I'll burn myself less. Ooh. Wagner. Not a sponsor. No. No, no. Still no sponsors. No. No worries. <laughs> People think, oh, they're going on vacation. They must have got a sponsor. <laughs> no. No. Jeff's nice enough to put us up in a house. Probably some Diet Coke in the fridge, I would bet. Maybe. <laughs> if I know him. Last time I hung out with him, I was out playing pool with him till four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> we'll see if Emily can hang. Yeah, really. 
So I did my I did my power wire. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do my grounds now. There's two of them, eight and fifteen in that uh, number two connector. And then on this thing, it calls it J2, J1, J2. Tells you what color the plug is and everything. Oh, on the, yeah, on the back of the thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. So. And this truck uh, came with a manual HVAC unit. It's around here somewhere. Ooh, yeah. Uh, but I'm going to use my automatic one just for fun, but the manual one works also. I think the automatic one looks fancier. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, so grounds are done. Alright, so everything is done except for our AC low pressure sensor, okay? So let's do that. That is on the truck. That is the sensor that screws into the side of the receiver dryer. Mm. Accumulator, a lot of people call them. And it goes from here, when it's above you know, 30 pounds or so, uh, that sensor closes and it goes to ground, okay? So we'll draw that in here in a little bit and show it going to ground, but we can go wired on the truck now. Mm -hmm. This is the uh, low pressure cutoff switch. You don't want to have your air conditioning system running uh, if you're low on refrigerant, and that's what this thing is going to do. The high side one in this thing also does that, but this is the main, main one that does it. If you don't have refrigerant in your system, you also aren't being able to transfer oil because it's mixed together with the refrigerant. So the minute it sees a low charge, it wants to make sure that that compressor is not kicking on to save the wear and tear on the compressor. It's got a black wire and a green wire. The green wire, we are going to uh, turn it into a blue wire. It ends up being blue with the HVAC module, but this wire will be a ground um, and it and it'll just go to my ground that I made there. Okay. Nope. And on an '85 or '84 Chevy truck, this would have been the sensor that ran everything. It would have been the one that cycled the uh, compressor on, and that was that was it for the wiring on the '85. Um, you would have the wire that come out of the firewall. Uh, went to this low pressure cutoff switch. People call it a cycling switch. It would go from there down to the compressor, supply it with 12 volts, and fire up the compressor. Now looking at the wires that are originally on the truck for that, they're quite a bit bigger than these, for sure. So, is that because it was doing more stuff? Yeah, it was doing a lot. It was going and it was going and supplying power to the AC compressor, and the co the compressors took more power, took more amperage. So those wires had to be a nice size. It also had a, another green wire that busted off from this one, and it went to the little kicker solenoid on the carburetor. Oh yes. So the problem with with those back then is the little kicker solenoid. They did not have enough power to actually move the accelerator pedal on its own mm -hmm. to move that throttle. So you would turn your air conditioning on, and you would it would run um, it would it would it would bog the engine down until you stepped on the accelerator pedal, and then the little kicker solenoid would be up in a lock position and run the idle faster. Ah, oh, but you, for, for, like you had to hit the pedal to actually... Yeah, if you didn't hit the pedal, it, it would just run at what RPM it, it was when you turned the AC switch on. Hmm. So, or, well, lower, because the AC compressor's taking, a, taking up some engine power, basically. Yeah. Right? Horsepower. <gasps> Not the horsepower, man. Mm-hmm. You need that. I'm pretty happy with the new... Wagner so far, except for the stink. Yeah, it's so much quieter. Mm -hmm. 
might get hotter faster. People say as technology goes on, things get better and better. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that personally because I lived in 19, the 80s. Yeah. When things are as cool as they were in the 80s, then I'll. Mm, yeah. Then I'll say, okay. Except for All that right. whole carb kicker thing you just talked about. Yeah, the carbs are in terrible. <laughs> All right, so let's plug it in to our sensor, and this is the sensor out of a out of a donor out of a 2000. Seven something. It's newer, okay? Okay. Any chance I get to make something better than 1980s technology, I, I always go for it. And, and that's going to be easier to go in and buy at a parts store anyway. So this is going to be my blue wire that goes into the HVAC module. Okay. So it's going to be inside, so I'm just going to shove it through there for a while. And that'll be the one wire that we'll have to hook up inside there. Okay. okay. Alright, so let's let's hook up our ground. I'm also gonna I made a I made a ground that come from the right hand cylinder head and I'm gonna add it to this one. So it's got a, a better ground up at the firewall going down to the motor. Having a nice ground going there is not a bad idea. Not, I don't see a ton of uh, good grounds on the firewall and, I, and, I, and actually I don't see any of them. So yeah, that one, those are terrible though. That, that's the original. Um, these would the, the threads would turn in there and come loose. Mm -hmm. So that's why I made that one. And then I also Loctite that so it won't come loose. So there's my ground for my uh, low pressure cutoff switch. Here's my blue wire that's going to go in and go to the HVAC module to let it know it's full of refrigerant or partially full. All right, so we got one more wire to wire up for our, or two more. This is the end of that wire that I shoved through the dash. I just made it long enough to loop around so we didn't have to spend any time inside there. Shorten it up later. When I figure out where I'm gonna hide all this stuff, the module may end up just sitting in the glove box, I don't know. And I'm not sure if this module keeps a memory of, of the AC on. Like if the battery's disconnected. Yeah. That's something I'll have to find out afterwards. The uh, Gen 3 ones do. So I'm thinking the Gen 4 probably does also. Okay, let's do this wire also. We're just gonna make a nice long one so we can do the same. Bring it out here and do the connections out here on it. Looks good. So that one was our uh, General Mills serial yeah. data? Yep, yeah, that one. So that's your communication between your HVAC module and your BCM. And then your BCM is going to send a signal through GM high speed LAN, plus and minus, and that goes to your ECM and makes everything happen. Okay? Okay. Add this one through. That's about it there. A couple more inches maybe. So we're all done here, okay? We've got all those done. We got our light sensor or our ambient temperature. We just did our low pressure sensor. 
Uh, the last one we did here was our wire that's going to go to serial data on the BCM. So let's go ahead and do that one. And we can call the uh, serial data one completely done, okay? Sweet. The BCMs. You might see it says 2011 Silverado. The guy who did this swap, he did not take, he didn't buy a donor that had like the BCM with it. So he brought me this one out of another one that they have. And it's a 2011 Silverado and it works just fine. We took one out of our 2007 that we have and it works just fine. So it's not, it's not VIN specific or anything like that. It is if you hooked in the vats on it that wouldn't, wouldn't read it. You know, the key, if you didn't have the correct uh, vats hooked up to it in the key. Oh, yeah. But for the most part, the 2011 one and the 2007, as long as the pin, I looked through the wiring diagrams and they were all the same. They did the same thing. Yeah. Well, I tried it and sure enough it worked. So that's what we're using. Uh, so let's find our green in connector 310. And it's probably that one I bet. It's the only green one, right? All the rest of them that I got looped up there, I know those aren't used. Same with these, those are cut short, but we only need three wires out of this one. But here's number 10, you read it backwards. The back of the plug, one, two, three, four, and then six over 10. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yep. So let's hook that up to our the end of our low speed serial data coming from the HVAC module. Okay, okay. Right? Tiny data wire. Data. Data. How in the world does that work? Have you ever asked your parents? No, apparently it's some big secret. All right. Okay. You got that connection done? So let's go up here to the top and start with this one. Okay, this is a tricky one. Okay, and I'm not sure uh, how this is gonna play out yet, but I look at a wiring diagram and I look at a power diagram. And if you look at it close enough, you'll notice that this five volt reference passes through the ignition switch on the donor and it supplies power to pin number two on run and start only. So I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna take and tie these two wires together bypass the it going through an ignition switch if it if it doesn't work quite right doing it that way oh sorry about that oh. if it doesn't work quite the way i want it to then i'll have to run it through a relay because it's five volts hmm. all right it's not 12 volts because when you hit 12 volts up to it it doesn't work right yeah. ask me how i know yeah they probably don't like that yeah it does it doesn't hurt anything but I did accidentally do that. Oh, really? <laughs> and uh, it doesn't work. Oh. Yeah. So let's tie these two wires together. Okay. And that one's supposed to be white, but yeah. we didn't have a white marker. Yeah. Or somebody yells at me. Not using the proper colors on the whiteboard. Yeah, why don't they make white markers? It doesn't make any sense. Nobody enjoys my dumb questions. I like them. There are no dumb questions here at Ugly Truck. So, there we have it. The pink, it was a pink and black one with a black stripe. And then this white one. So, I'm just connecting them together. And going with that, okay? Okay. The, the heat is like right at the center of it. Okay. So, two and four done. Those two are connected together, so now when I apply power to it, it gets five volts to that wire for some reason. I uh, don't know why, but it, that's what it wants. Uh, I tried it without two, and it doesn't work without it. Okay. So now let's do 14. It is pink, and it is hot and run and start, all right? But for today's fun, I'm going to just tie these three together because I'm gonna to have to wire that into a 
hot and run and start only for my uh, BCM anyway. Okay. Okay. But for today's experiment, I'm just going to tie all three of them together and then I'll fix that later by uh, hooking that to a wire under the dash. Oh, okay. Okay. So we're so, going hot at all times. So we're going to go hot at all times, but that one there is supposed to be hot and run and start. Okay. I did not cut these this short either. The guy who owns the truck brought it to me like that. Uh, I yelled at him. <laughs> said, what do you think you're doing? And he said, I have no clue. <laughs> that was his exact words. Yeah. And then he uh, cried. Probably on the drive home. Yeah. Why did Jerry yell at me again? <laughs> <laughs> Poor Mark. Mark's been very patient. He's a nice guy. You can come meet him too at the uh, Missouri C-10 Cruising Show, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. September 7th, Springfield, Missouri. Come hang out and check out this truck. Come meet us. Yes. Run up to Emily. She loves when people run up to her very quickly. <laughs> and uh, startle her. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I've got some really fun stuff planned for the C10 show. So if you guys are in the area, be sure to stop by. Spectators are free. It was a great show last year. Yeah, uh, over 500, somewhere around 500 trucks last year. All GM, OBS, and older. Okay, so that's my power for my BCM. Uh, I need my ground. It's a large uh, ground wire. On this one, it's just a, it just has this one single ground. There are other grounds on the whole thing, but not for what we need. Yes. That can't be the ground for the whole thing. No. I don't think it would work very good, like when you hit the starter. No. Not work. Why do so many LS swaps bring down? Oh, that reminds me of that. So don't, don't even forget to bring that up. What, yeah. burning this truck down again? No, we won't burn this truck down. Oh. And we were just kidding about the insurance thing. Uh, total disclaimer. Yeah, yeah. That was just a joke. We joke around yeah, a lot. jokes, ha. <laughs> <laughs> uh, We like to joke with each other and yeah. um, it keeps things uh, lighthearted. Oh, yeah. And it stops us from strangling each other. I'm figuring this thing out, how to get it to go the way I want. I do think it's quicker. Yeah. I like it. Yep. Okay, so there's our ground. Two more wires to go. GM LAN uh, positive and uh, GM LAN high speed negative or minus, okay? It's not negative. Don't ever put a ground to that. There's no such thing as negative volts, okay? Uh, it's just a, a different, it needs those two wires to uh, communicate the way that GM high speed LAN does. It's two different languages basically. And uh, on that, on this BCM, when I initially was messing around with this, there are two sets of GM LAN wires that come out of it. And I was being smart and I just thought I'd grab either of them and uh it didn't work that way so yeah i had to actually go to the uh, wiring diagram to make sure i was going to the right pins because that uh, those signals bust off and go to some other things that are not used on a swap so i'm going to add some length to this and we are going to plug it in to uh, this truck has a, a Dakota digital dash, so the Dakota, Dakota digital dash uh, plugs into the ALDL connector. So every time I go to put my scan tool up to it, I gotta unplug it. So I get I got tired of that, so I bought this. Uh, um, what would you call it? That's Splice splitter. Yeah, splitter. And so this is gonna plug into that. His uh, Dakota digital dash can plug into this one. And I'm going to come into the wires here and I'm going to get a hold of the GM LAN plus and minus. Okay. Okay. 
and we'll just tee into them so that way I can just plug my scan tool in and not have to unplug anything. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's kind of a pain. Yeah. So uh, 16 and 17 goes, 16 goes to uh, number six, okay, on the ALDL connector. So one, two, three, four, five, six, that one. And mm -hmm. then the other one, uh, 14 directly below it uh, for the minus. Uh, goes to that one and they happen to be green this uh it's a cheap amazon yeah. plug and uh none of the colors i noticed in it are uh, even close yeah okay. they're very pretty though yeah but, see what they were going for but they don't care about that it's like as long as it works you know so yeah they don't they don't expect people to be slight slicing into them like i do it's probably avoiding the warranty <laughs> No. Do it right there. There it went. Yay. Didn't it? I'll just do the other one orange. Oh. Or they were supposed to be tan. One, one of them has a black strap and the other one does not. Red butt connector, please. Butt connector. Hot. So I got I got these wired into my splitter here. Okay, so it'll plug into the ALDL connector, make the connection to the GM LAN, uh, high and low, high plus and minus, whatever you want to call it. So. Uh, the positive, the plus six goes to tan and black. Is that right? So six goes to sixteen. That makes some kind of sense. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So. Okay, and then fourteen is on the ALDL connector is going to go to seventeen on the body control module and then that is it for our data connections forever forever all right so on our hvac module we need something that's going to make it come alive and according to the wiring diagram, it's supposed to be hot at all times, but we don't want it hot at all times. Uh, we just want to be able to turn this module on when the um, air conditioning switch on the inside comes on. Okay. Right? So that's how we're going to do that. I'm going to go to the light green wire that comes out from the uh, 84 um air conditioning switch and only one of them is going to be uh, have 12 volts with the air conditioning switch on and it's this one I checked it with a test light so I'm going to go to go to that to number one on the HVAC module and that will be what turns my HVAC module on and off. So you're using the old stuff to power up the new stuff? Correct. And I'm just going to do it with a crimp on solderless connector because I'm going to redo all this to make it look nice, okay? Yep. Okay, so I got a good connection there. Okay. So what's interesting to me is, so now I got power going to this. I can, I'll hook up a ground here. So I'll go and I'll put power to it and the air conditioning switch and it doesn't come on. Okay. It'll only come on connected to the body control module, okay? Okay. So I'm gonna do that just to show you, okay? And then we'll leave it on and then I'll hook up the body control module while it's on and then you'll see it come to life, okay? So, but I'm going to go ahead and put the ground for the body control module together with this one. Okay, so there's my ground for that. 
the ground for that. And then my number one on my HVAC unit going to the truck. So, I've got it, the air conditioning switch on in there, okay? And it doesn't do anything. Okay. Nothing. Not what you want, right? Nope. So, let's add some power to the body control module. And I'll just take it off of that for now. It's a good place. And I'm going to hook power up to the body control module. Yeah, we'll see how it goes, okay? Okay. It's lit up. There you go. Okay. Uh, I'll hit the air conditioning button and it flashes. It has it has a problem. It doesn't see uh, pressure in the air conditioning system, okay? Okay. So once I I'm gonna I'm gonna add some refrigerant to it, bring that up above 30 pounds okay. or so, and then it would be then it it'd be fine as long as it was running. It'll turn the air conditioning on. Okay. Okay. So all right. So we got to uh, plug in the AODL connector, which will make the connection to the uh, GM LAN. Uh, positive and negative connections to the ECM, right? So, there you have that. Uh, I'll be able to plug my scan tool in there if I need to, and I can plug the Dakota Digital Dash in there and not have to connect and disconnect everything all the time using that. Okay? Yep. And we've got both the grounds done, so now uh, if I turn the ignition on, just like we just did, we'll have power, okay? Okay. Only with the air conditioning turned on. Yes. Okay? But the BCM is fired up. This thing has power going to it right now, which I have no clue how it's not lit up when there's power going to it, but it's the BCM that turns this thing on really somehow, okay? So, right now, if it had refrigerant in it, it would work. But this nightmare truck <laughs> has a hole in the condenser. Yeah. Um, I initially started it when we wanted to do our experiments with it. And we saw a little puff of smoke when we fired it up. And it sure enough, it has a hole in the condenser. And the hole seems to be getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, you can uh, hear it now. Yeah. So. All right, but I can put some refrigerant to it We'll waste a little bit of refrigerant and uh, put some pressure in the system. We'll start this thing up and we'll hit the uh, AC button out here. Uh, and we'll try it in the truck too, of course, and see how it works. Okay. okay. And this has got a cam in it, so mm -hmm. we don't know. It's, an, it's mysterious to us too. It could be totally different, but we know how it would work if it had the stock cam in it. Yes. Right? It would work perfectly. Yeah. So, all right, AC. Oh, I'm gonna open my bottle up. Even though most of this is gonna leak out, I still wanna know how much I put in it, okay? So that way I can overcharge him the correct amount. <laughs> Add refrigerant to the low side so we'll I'll start the truck and then I'll come out and we'll I'll give it some pressure you know okay and then it may still have enough pressure in it from yesterday but we'll see okay okay ready yeah Go and I'm going to turn this, the air conditioning, the original air conditioning switch into the 
air conditioning on, okay? Okay. We'll see what happens. Okay, so that went a lot better than what we expected. I, I thought with the cam in it, maybe you'd notice it somewhat or, you know, but honestly, I fired that thing up and took a look down there and the compressor was running and I didn't even notice that it came on. <laughs> uh, so that's pretty impressive. Uh, the guy who tuned it, he said that if there was some kind of a hiccup with the cam or whatever, that he could tune that out of it too. So that was one of the possibilities, but it doesn't, it's tuned perfectly. Okay? Yeah. That yeah. guy, the Wes, he's super good at it. We appreciate Wes. Yeah, shout out to Wes. Um, so everything works fine. Uh, as soon as I'm done here, I'm going to uh, wire in a manual one, okay? Ooh. This automatic one is actually mine out of a 2007. This is a 2011 uh, body control module that the owner of the truck brought me. And he also brought me this because that's these two came out of the same vehicle. Mm. But that there shows you that this one communicates with that, no problem. And it also communicates perfectly fine with the 2007 that I plugged into it. So these things aren't as fickle as what people lead you to believe, okay? Yeah. Uh, it's not going to recognize your VATs unless you go through all that trouble, but nobody that's doing an LS swap is dealing with VATs, hopefully anyway. That's eliminated from the ECM. Yeah. Okay? So, what do I got to do? I, you can tell there's no way that he's going to come and pay me for this. <laughs> and, uh, and 
be ex say that's acceptable. He's going to want that cleaned up. I so, we put a blanket down. Yeah, I could just put the blanket over it. There you go. Just wrap it up. There you right. go. <laughs> so I got a, a bunch of wiring to clean up and I have to add fuses. Okay. Why am I holding that? I don't know. <laughs> okay. So these fuses, I got to add in here uh, three 10 amp fuses. Uh, the one that is running start, it's already running through an ignition switch fuse. And, uh, and then these two are just tied together. So they're basically working off of that fuse, right? But one thing I wanted to mention about fuses. Uh, say we're gonna add a, a fuse. Oh, we gotta do it in black. So we're gonna add a fuse to it. Um, see, oh, I think my fuses are better than yours. Yeah. So you wanna add a fuse um, as close as you can to your battery source. Okay, so say your battery's, you know, out here, and you got your positive and you got your negative. It doesn't do much good to put your fuse in front of this or at the end of the circuit because that whole length of wire is uh, not protected that way. Okay, so you want to put your fuse as close to your your positive battery source as possible. Okay. Because I've been seeing a lot of that lately. And that means your fuse is only protecting up to that, um, whatever you're going to, that whole length of wire all the way up to your battery source is not protected. Okay. Okay. So run a fuse to those things and wire it up that way. And your AC is going to work perfectly. Yes. Okay. And it did remember that the, the AC was on. Uh, with after the keys turned off uh, how it does that I don't know because this is uh, the source of power uh, hot at all times to the HVAC module but I'm shutting that off completely so when that HVAC module is shut off um, when the um, switch inside the truck is off no power going there and that's the only source of power that that goes in there so that thing remembers that the AC was on and it turns it back on magically. Magic. Okay. And either that or that information is stored in the BCM somehow, which got its information from the serial data going to it. And then don't forget, in order to make everything really work, you just have to hook up the GM LAN uh, plus and minus. Okay. Okay. All right, so up next for this truck, cruise control. Yes. Uh, we are going to wire the cruise control in this truck. Uh, we will do it with the original 1984 switch and everything, which is uh, difficult to do on a Gen 4. Everything's difficult on a Gen 4. <laughs> but we'll show you how we're gonna do it. Okay. The only thing it's not difficult on a Gen 4 to do mm -hmm. is don't buy one. Yeah, yeah, that's the easy part. Yes. Avoid and, it entirely. <laughs> yeah. And then, okay. And then if you are looking into buying a Gen 4, we need to do another video of a teardown of those of the things that you need to keep because you're going to want to keep this. You're going to want to keep this. Mm -hmm. uh, all the wiring that come out of them. Um, there's so much more that has to be kept yeah. electronically with a Gen 4. And if you just go and you buy one online or however from your neighbor and it doesn't have all that stuff, then you're going to be turned around and forced to buy a bunch of stuff yes. that hopefully works. But if you buy one that is all has everything intact, the odds of everything working and performing perfectly with it, and it's going to make your life a lot easier. Okay. Yeah. So that's my advice about a Gen 4 not complaining about them i love them but they are more difficult okay yep so. a little more complicated yep and make sure you check out the links in the description for the c10 cruise and show presented by mo c10 addiction in springfield missouri on september 7th 
We will be there all day. I've got all kinds of cool giveaway stuff. So make sure you come say hi. And October 6th through the 13th is cruising the coast. We will be down there hanging out, seeing some really cool stuff. I'm really excited about it. So make sure you're following us on Facebook and Instagram. I'll post all kinds of updates where we're gonna be and everything. We'd love to meet you guys. So if you're in the area, come check it out. As always, we appreciate you guys watching and we will catch you next time. Thank you.